Hello, Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. Have a, a Mercedes Sprinter. It's in for some engine management lights flashing. All right, so inside, it's literally just pulled up. So I've just opened the bonnet. He's explaining about some parts that have been replaced. Engine lights flashing. So it's had various sensors chucked out of it, at least maybe a dozen. So so I've been told. Now I have seen this van before back in March. Um, he was telling me at the time it's it spent. I don't know, was it six weeks or something like that at a garage and they replaced a dozen sensors and they couldn't get to the bottom of the fault. Um, now, like I keep saying in my old videos, um, if you don't have a smoke tester and you're running a garage, go and get one because the amount of people that are coming to me that just need a smoke test done, um, it's just ridiculous. Um, but this van is back again so it, it was that was about three or four months ago march it was like the first week of march so we are on yeah so maybe four months or something like that now it's got an engine management light on again um last time it came to me i found that the intercooler was literally split in half um and the garage didn't even notice that by eye but not only that, if they had a smoke machine, they could have tested that, but they didn't have one, so he had to come to me to do that. So now it's went away, it's had the intercooler done, but now we have the fall back, so it's obviously got something else going on. Let's have a look. Okay, get the diagnostic set up. Uh, it's the Euro Tab 3 scan tool. Okay, so this is uh, 2010, I believe, so it's below the 13. Uh, it's the four cylinder 2.1 health report. Okay, it's so just running through a scan. See what faults we can find. We're gonna have a lot of codes here that will maybe need to be just ignored. Electrical issues or right, so cruise control, yeah, that's gonna be ignored. The reverse and lamp, I'm not worried about that speaker. Mm, engine can bus mm, possibly P0106 that's probably going to be the same I don't remember if that's the same code that we had last time so it's got a intake air system issue as well as a P246309 um, uh, I mean my question is at the minute when it came to me last time it was just a diagnostic uh, it went away back to the other garage for it for them to do that intercooler. Now, obviously the stupid question is, is did they clear the fault codes after they fitted the intercooler? Surely they would have, I'm just gonna assume, yeah. So we may have another leak somewhere. Uh, so we might have to look at that. Okay, so just use a little seven mil to open this. I'm gonna use this tool here. It's a smoke machine from Launch UK. Okay, got it hooked up to the vehicle here. Now, I'm just gonna insert this in here. Now I'm going to keep an eye on sort of these areas, manifold, turbo, intercooler, even though it's had a new one fitted, it still could maybe be fitted incorrectly. And of course keeping an eye on these boost hoses, you can see we've got a big oil leak here from the engine block somewhere. Well I don't have smoke over here yet but this area looks suspicious because we have wet oily residue around the chassis there and the pipe okay so a few minutes have passed we have no leaks found so question is what's going on so we disconnect the smoke test okay so a quick chat with the customer it's not his fault uh, I mean he's not a mechanic so he's not gonna know the full extent of, of what needs to be done but um, he's just uh, told me that after it went away and um, had the diagnostic from me last time he didn't actually go back to the garage who were doing the repairs because it spent six weeks or so there and they done over a dozen different attempts at repairing it um four or five times he said he was told that the van was fixed but when he drove half a mile away from the garage the light would come back on so what he ended up doing was he fitted the intercooler himself 
Um, and then he said his little cheap scan tool just wasn't able to reset the fault. Um, he's been trying to reset it, but it's not resetting. So there still must be a fault there. So I think this is a false fault that I'm looking at. It's the same fault that was there last time. Intercooler has been fitted. There is no boost leak. So I think what we need to do is just with a decent scan tool, do some resets and maybe clean the particle filter out. And so if you've got a cheap OBD scan tool, it's probably not going to clear these faults. So we need to get these properly reset and a clean maybe of the particle filter here. So out of curiosity, this is not an OBD scan, this is a proper scan, but we're going to try and clear fault codes and see what happens. Okay, we've still got a flashing engine light and we've still got these faults logged. So that sort of correlates to what customer is saying here. Now, this can't be a genuine fault because I've just cleared it, started the vehicle, hasn't even been driven, so it wouldn't know if there's an intake system problem because you'd need to drive it for some time for that to actually register that the boost pressure isn't right. So what this is going to need is a lot of special functions sorting out. So in the special functions, we're going to go to component replacement. We're going to do a hot mass airflow sensor re reset. Okay, uh, leak in system must be performed after replacing the following particle filter, the pressure sensor, air mass flow sensor. Yeah, we could have just probably done this one. We're going to do this anyway, just to be sure. To be sure, to be sure. Now, I'm also going to do the particle filter, but I am going to clean the particle filter, so you shouldn't do this if you're not going to clean the particle filter and you reset it and your particle filter is full of soot. You can cause it to overheat once that soot starts to burn and you will possibly damage the DPF or even set fire to your vehicle depending on what car it is. Vauxhall insignias I think are quite dangerous for that. Yeah, it's just telling you to make sure that you have actually replaced a component or cleaned it before you do this. Again, that's been reset. Now, if we come back and clear the fault codes, this time they should should clear. Now that's done, read the fault codes, and they are now gone. Now with the engine running, we're going to do diesel particle filter check. This one. Pressure sensor. And if we change that over to HPA. So we've got anywhere between 20 to 30 millibars of pressure there. These vehicles here they only go up in sort of tens so you don't see any any sort of reading on here below 10 you'd have 0 then 10 then 20 then 30 millibars so if you've got 29 millibars of pressure you would still be showing 20 until it reaches 30 then it would show so even if you've got 10 millibars shown on here you, you could have sort of 19 millibars of pressure and on these you should only have sort of one or two millibars of pressure at the vehicle idle when the vehicles switched on so we're just going to put a little bit of a flush through it because what we don't want to do is send a customer down the road, he gets five miles away and then flags back up that the DPF is, is um, blocked. So, yeah, we'll flush it out, and of course, like I said before, by flushing the soot out, build up that's in there, you're not, you're not going to risk overheating the DPF. And we're also not going to risk doing a forced regeneration, which is going to contaminate his oil and just put unnecessary wear on the engine. So on these vans, you can either come through this oxygen sensor here or through one of these uh, DPF pressure hoses here of course it would be the first one that goes right here okay so that one does not want to play ball okay so what I've done here is I've just removed the bracket and I've disconnected this hose here which goes to the DPF down there okay, so I connect up my DPF gun here give it a squeeze Once about half of the bottle's gone in, I'll run the engine and then put the other half in like this. Connect that back up. 
Okay, we've got all that fitted back together. Okay, you see some foam coming from the exhaust like that. Now we're going to hold the revs up for a minute or two. Now we can see we have a zero reading with the engine running. Now we've also got a new fault popped up as well. Exhaust fault and the EGR valve. That does happen. Now very common with transits I've seen that happen. You clean the DPF or you replace the glow plugs that have been faulty. And once that fault has been cleared, the EGR valve then tries to wake up and it doesn't happen. So that might be the case, but we'll reset it again and take it on a test drive make sure that the fault um, hasn't just popped up for no reason it might sort of free out itself now once we take it on a test drive and if it does uh, we'll just let it be but if not it might need a new EGR valve in the future yeah I probably will mention uh, actually so obviously I did have a customer at one point in the past with a transit saying you know but that fault wasn't there when you first done the diagnosis so are you sure you haven't done anything that might have upset the EGR and basically is it your fault it's it it happens so if you've been driving a van around for a thousand miles two three four thousand miles with any engine management light on your EGR valve is going to be closed um, then you get these faults fixed your EGR wants to wake up and suddenly it's stuck so that's what happens there that's why you get an EGR fault after you've left had a prolonged engine management light on while you're driving around Okay, I've taken it on sort of about five or six miles test drive. All seems to be good with the EGR so far, so maybe it was just stuck at first on the first try to open it, but it seems to have cured itself, so we'll just ignore that for now unless it comes back. Okay, we're back after the test drive, no fault codes are back. So that's it, we're all finished on the sprinter. So that's him on his way, and main point of this video, what I want to say is, so that guy spent many months messing around at a garage who were let's try this let's try that blah 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 and they didn't find the problem so what I'm saying is it, like this is a garage I'm talking about that's got four employees and um, four mechanics working there but they don't have one of these it's a smoke machine if you don't have one and you're running a garage you need to get yourself one literally I had a, a woman come down last week from Inverness um, because she couldn't find anybody in Scotland who could do uh, a, a test on why why there was an, an air algorithm fault on a, on a Transit Connect, and she drove all the way down from Inverness for me to do a smoke test because I you know I said to her let's see if you can get someone to do a smoke test up there, and she said she tried over a dozen garages and they all said that they didn't have one. Um, you know they're not that expensive, but um, yeah that's just a little bit of a little bit of information to add to the video just just to say some of the stuff that I see and it's just really surprising them how you see some of these garages that look you know they've got units as big as this one in the back but yet they don't have a smoke machine it's um, it seems a bit ridiculous to me but anyway I'll see you on the next video